but let me go back a little bit and understand how the film system works in China. There are only 34 international films that are allowed to be shown a year in China. And 12 of those, one third of those, has to be an IMAX film or a 3D film uh, at minimum. So what they want is, is these high profile uh, tentpole movies, they're called. Um, uh, digital CGI films, uh, uh, you know, the Marvel movies, et cetera, um, which are, are consumed at a very high level in China and entrepreneurs can make a lot of money. The two biggest distributing companies in China are state owned. The film industry is owned by the state in China. So of course there's a lot of self-censorship. Uh, what would have been a villain, maybe a Chinese villain, is now a North Korean villain in a movie. Um, I mean, some of it is quite silly. Uh, there was a, a movie, high-profile movie, where I think it was Tom Cruise was walking through Shanghai and there was some underwear on a clothesline. Um, the censor objected to that because it made Shanghai look like a less developed city, um, and it was removed. Um, um, Christopher Robin uh, was not allowed to be screened in China because there was some uh, amusement that, uh, that, that Winnie the Pooh looked like Xi Jinping and it was refused entry into China. Mm -hmm. But yes, I see this in studios and it comes up even recently with me. There was a script, that, quite a good script, that takes place partly in China and the producers of it um, at first balked at the idea of me being in the film. And then they were talked to, and actually they're supporters of the Dalai Lama in Tibet. And they took a deep breath and said, no, 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 we're gonna make the moral decision here. So we are talking about making that film. Of course, we'll never be able to shoot it in Shanghai. I'm not allowed to go to China. Mm -hmm. I don't even know now if I'd be allowed in Hong Kong. Um, I asked point blank to very well-known actress, friends of mine, Chinese actresses, if I could work with them. And they said, absolutely not. Their mm -hmm. careers would be over in China. They'd never be allowed to work again. I've had other circumstances with very talented Chinese directors that uh, one was in tears with me, having to call me up and say that he couldn't work with me, that his career would be over and his family could not travel. Um, so, I mean, this is personal to a lot of people. My own career, I can't say, has suffered at all because I don't make CGI kind of films. My films wouldn't naturally be shown in China anyhow, except kind of underground and on the black market. I know when I, the film that I made, um, uh, Red Corner, many years ago, of course, we couldn't shoot it in, in, in Asia. We couldn't even get insurance because of me and the threat from the Communist Party. Um, but when it was shown, um, I did go to Hong Kong after that. And although it wasn't officially shown in China, as I was going up the elevator in, in the hotel there, the, uh, the elevator operator looked up at the camera that was watching us in the elevator. And as I passed him at my floor, he said, thank you for Red Corner. <laughs> well, there is that ubiquitous technical surveillance uh, in a police state that uh... By which... well, we know that the we know that the, the the budget for surveillance in China is larger than the military budget. 